Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you've just picked up an Anmanic RG406V or you're thinking of getting one, you're probably wondering how to get the most out of this versatile handheld. I've done extensive research across various expert reviews and community guides to bring you the best tips and tricks I could find in one easy video. While I haven't personally handled the device, these insights come from trusted voices in the retro gaming community who've put the RG406V through its paces. I will leave links in the description below for these videos if you want to check them out in more detail, as some of these tips are a bit technical and I will just be covering the basics. So hit up these creators if you want the full breakdown. If you find some value from the video, please remember to like, share and subscribe as it really helps the channel out and I genuinely appreciate every bit of input. So for tip number one, let's start with getting your games running smoothly. One of the best aspects of emulation is that you can increase the resolution of those classic games you love to make them look super smooth and silky. One of the big ways of doing this is by increasing what is called integer scaling. A good tip for this, especially when you're playing GameCube or Wii games, using the Dolphin emulator is that the metrics display is key. You can enable it in the graphics settings. It's like having a little dashboard for your gaming performance in the top right corner. It has a speed indicator that shows you how fast the game is running currently and below that a max indicator that effectively shows how much the system is capable of for the specific game. This will help you when you have to decide on how much you can scale up the resolution on any specific Wii or GameCube game. So if your speed indicator is at 100% and the max indicator is at 145%, you know you can take the scaling up a notch. From what I've seen, most GameCube games will run at a 2x resolution on the 406V, with the Vulkan backend enabled. The likes of Metroid Prime, for example, look beautiful at a 2x resolution, but something like Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 needs a bit more coaxing and will struggle even at native resolution. This is because the likes of this Star Wars flight sim is at the limits of what the processor on the 406V can handle. Speaking of performance tuning, performance testing shows that the PlayStation 2 emulator, which is called Ether SX2, works best with specific settings. You can set the renderer to Vulkan and use a native 1x resolution. This seems to be the best general option to get the most possible games working, but some may be playable at a 2x resolution. Reviewers also found that some games perform better with an OpenGL backend so you may have to switch back and forth between it and Vulkan in different games. Now, let's talk comfort, because what good is perfect emulation if your hands are crampy? The 406V is one of the more chunky handouts available, so it can be more of a burden to hold up during extended play sessions. Reviewers point out that its bulky vertical design requires some thoughtful handling. It was suggested that you treat it like a workout. Take breaks every 30 to 45 minutes and position your hands just right. Rest the bottom on your palms, Keep your wrists straight and maybe prop it up on a stand for longer sessions and connect a Bluetooth controller. It's all about finding that ergonomic sweet spot. Next up, when it comes to setting up RetroArch, there are a few things that you can do to make your experience a bit better. For those of you that don't know, RetroArch is the software, or app in this case, that runs all of the different emulator apps that make your retro games work. One good tip here is to configure the settings so your left analog stick will be detected for movements in systems like Sega Genesis and NES that use just the D-pad. By doing this, you can use either the D-pad or the analog stick for movement in these games, which is much more convenient. To do this, go to the main menu in RetroArch, press right twice on the D-pad to get to the settings screen, and then click on Input. Choose RetroPad Binds, and then Port 1 Controls. Once in this menu, click on the Analog to Digital Type option, and choose Left Analog. That's it. Once this is enabled, you should be able to use the analog controller for direction in your older retro games. Speaking of the analog sticks, another great tip for these is that the caps on top of the sticks can pop right off and seem to be of the same design as those on the Retro Pocket 4 Pro. So you can actually swap them out if you prefer as they come right off just by pulling up on them. Alternatively, you can order 3D printed caps that were designed for the RP4 Pro as it should work on the 406V as well. There is a shop on Etsy called Secure Retro Modding that sells these if you want to get some. I will leave a link in the description below. So that's it, 5 tips that should take your gaming experience on the RG406V to the next level. Just be aware that depending on where you buy your unit, the software configuration settings mentioned in this video may already be enabled, as some shops set up their units before they send them to their customers. Hopefully though, something that you've seen here helps you get a better experience. 
Also, drop me a line in the comments if there are any tips I've missed. It would be good to hear what your experience is, especially if you own a 406V and have found something useful you think the rest of us can benefit from. If you want some more detail on the 406V, check out my comparison on it with the 405V by clicking on the link on screen now. That's it for this one though. Have a nice day and I will catch you in the next tech update.